Hello, everybody. This is Dave Wallace coming to you from my home here in Waiwa, Hawaii, and welcome to Monday Talk Story Time on a Tuesday. <laughs> Sorry for missing you folks uh, yesterday, but yesterday was pretty busy. And uh, tonight, I wanted to make this a full-on story time, and I'll be sharing a story uh, that I created for my Kindle Vela. This is a new series that I'm introducing on uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day, and uh, it's called The Shark Man of Haleiwa. And I'm going to be sharing with you episode, um, part of episode one. Um, we'll get to an interesting point, then I'll stop. And uh, if you want to read the rest, you're going to have to sign in uh, on on how uh, on. I keep on calling this thing Halloween, <laughs> but uh, you can uh, sign in on Valentine's Day and check out uh, the rest of the uh, the rest of the story. So this is the Shark Man of Haleiwa. And for those of you wondering where I get my inspiration uh, for these stories, uh, the Shark Man or any of the shape-shifting stories that I'm talking about is based on uh, Hawaiian and Polynesian legend. Um, as legend goes, they were shapeshifters among uh, Polynesians, and we called these shapeshifters kupua. Uh, kupua were demigods whose parents were the gods. And because they were uh, they were part god and part human, they had godly powers. And one of those powers was the ability to change their form. Uh, the most famous of the shapeshifters in Polynesian uh, mythology is Maui, the trickster. Okay, and he could change himself into many different forms uh, to uh, conceal himself and be like a chameleon. So Maui was uh, one example of a kupua. You also have uh, Kamapua'a, who was a uh, pig man. And in fact, he's famous for his battles and love, uh, love affair that he had with the goddess uh, of fire, uh, Pele. And if you're on the island of Oahu and you look at the windward side of the Ko'olau, uh, Kolau Range, you'll see huge gouges in the Kolau Mountains. Well, those gouges are uh, legendary. Uh, the uh, legends say it was made by the tusk of Kamapua as he sharpened his tusk. Okay, so Kamapua, another uh, another demigod. Uh, we also have the, the tradition of family almakua, or family protectors, uh, who can take the form of anything in nature. And for our family, uh, there are two almakua spirits, or spirit animals, or forms, that uh, come to protect us and serve as our family protectors. One is the eel, and the other is a shark. Okay, so there are two Amakua for the family. The difference is, is that um, in order to call a person, uh, call an Amakua to help you, uh, you will need to know the names. And if you follow the traditions and know the names of the Amakua, then and feed it and take care of it, then uh, when you need help, it will come and assist you. And I was very fortunate to see one of my almakos three times already. So, and um, the almako would not only show up as uh, as animal forms, but also things in nature, such as a cloud in the sky or uh, anything long and skinny, uh, like a vine. If you're walking in the woods and you need direction and all of a sudden an unusual vine shows up and will take you to a certain place. And I've had that happen several times. Okay, so uh, the Shark Man of Haleiwa. Uh, this is actually a prequel to my other, um, the other, another story that I wrote uh, called The Mark of the Eel or Mark of the Puhi. It's, which is the first of my Hawaiian shapeshifter series. 
So the shock man actually occurs before um, the story of the short of the uh, the eel is supposed to be taking place. So this is one generation before the arrival of Kavai. <laughs> and in fact, in this story, um, Paul, who is the mother of, who's the father of a Kavai, is uh, actually a two-year-old. <laughs> and Momi, who is the grandmother of Kavai in the uh, Mark of the Eel, is actually a young mother. Okay. So the shark man of Haleiwa, and I like to share that story with you right now. Okay, and I'm going to expand this a little bit more. Okay, the shark man of Haleiwa, episode number one. The episode is called Cannibal, and again, you're going to be scratching your head, Dave. Why are you releasing Cannibal? on Valentine's, isn't it more appropriate for Halloween? Well, the story is about love, yeah? Love and compassion. And the love and compassion of one woman uh, that she has for a child that is born unwanted. Nobody wants them. In fact, the parents want to get rid of them any way they can. So uh, it's a love that this woman has for uh, a child that is different and nobody knows what to do. So this is actually a love story, okay? So let's begin. Episode number one, Cannibal. Nani knew there was something wrong with her babies. She was eight months pregnant and the twins in her belly were in constant motion, kicking and pushing against her abdominal walls. For three consecutive days, the kicking and movement became increasingly violent as if the twins were fighting. Nani walked out to their covered lanai where her husband, uh, Kekoa, sat mending his fishing nets. Kekoa was a commercial fisherman who made Wailua his home on an art shore of Wahoo. Koa, I don't think the babies are getting along in my stomach. Koa laughed. Well, think about it, Nani girl. Two people smashed together inside your tiny stomach. Someone is bound to be very unhappy. Hey, this is not a joke, Koa. It's real. The other night, while I was sleeping, I thought I heard a tiny baby screaming as if it was being hurt. Oh, that's not good. Why didn't you tell me about that? Do you want me to take you to the doctors? Maybe we should get you checked out to see if something is wrong. And now let's give it a couple of days and see what happens. A day later, the kicking and frantic movement stopped. Nani examined her belly and noticed that the belly had shrunk in size. Rubbing her stomach across her belly, trying to feel her children, she approached Kekwa, who was now tying fishing lines for bottom fishing. Kwa, come look at my stomach. Do I look fat or skinny? Kekwa stared at Nani, annoying that the wrong answer could get him into a lot of trouble. You look good, baby. <laughs> Kwa, I'm serious. Look at my stomach. Do you notice something different? Kwa switched glasses uh, before studying Nani. Hey, it looks like you lost some weight. Your stomach got a little smaller. Yeah, it got small. Suddenly, Nani felt the urge to urinate. So she ran to the bathroom. As she wiped herself, she was horrified to see the toilet was filled with blood. She screamed, Keikwa, I need your help. Keikwa ran to the bathroom and saw Nani crying and pointing down to the toilet. 
there's blood in a toilet, a lot of blood. What happened? Did you have a miscarriage? I don't think so. I still feel baby moving inside me. Not active, but still moving. Okay, let's get you to the hospital now. The closest hospital was uh, Waihawa General. Rather than calling an ambulance, he could help Nani into the truck and sped up the hill to Waihawa. Nani called ahead on her cell phone and described to the nurse what was happening to her. By the time they arrived at the hospital, the doctor and staff were ready for her. Nani was quickly taken to the examination room. Hello, Mrs. Lavoya. I'm Dr. Holmes. I will be examining you. Please relax while I check you and your babies out, okay? A few minutes later, and the doctor listened uh, through his stethoscope, trying to locate the fetal heartbeats. You say you have twins? Asked Dr. Holmes. Yes, that's what my ultrasound showed. I see, answered Dr. Holmes as he continued checking. He did not want to tell Nani that he could only locate one fetal heartbeat. We'll need to do another ultrasound to see what's going on with your babies. A nurse retrieved an ultrasound machine and examined Nani's abdomen. In less than a minute, she alerted the doctor. Dr. Holmes, you need to see this. The doctor examined the screen and could not believe what he was seeing. On one side of Nani's uterus was a healthy looking baby boy. On the other side, it was a twin of the living fetus. There were also scattered parts of the dead fetus. Arms, legs, and fingers floated in the amniotic fluid as if someone had, or something, had ripped the child to pieces. Not wanting to send the couple into panic, the doctor had to find the right words for Nana and Kekua. Hmm. Something has happened to your child that requires immediate attention. At this moment, we can only detect one heartbeat and one child in your womb. One child that is alive. It appears that something happened to the second child. To prevent the same thing from happening to your remaining child, we need to remove him from your uterus, from your uterus right now. Now, no mother wants to hear this, these dreaded words. Nani struggled with denial as her heart broke. How could this happen? She asked herself. After composing herself, she asked the doctor, are you saying one of my babies is dead? Again, we can only detect one heartbeat. So only one child appears to be alive. So are you suggesting a C-section to save the one that's still alive? Asked Ekoa. We're not sure what happened to the other child, but yes, I'm suggesting a C-section immediately. But I'm only 36 weeks along. Doesn't it take longer for my baby's lungs to be fully developed? Well, yes, that's the norm, but normally a baby's lung is fully formed at about 37 weeks. So one week shy isn't too bad. Uh, we'll, we'll, accept, we'll assess your child's condition once he's delivered. Nani and Kakua consented to the procedure once they understood the risk and recommendations given to them to the doctor. Nani was taken to uh, the, the operating room and prepped for the C-section. After scrubbing down and wearing protective gear, 
Kekua was allowed to observe. The doctor began to make his incision into Nani's lower abdomen, then open Nani's womb. What he saw was horrifying. Tiny body parts and a river of blood spilled from the uterus. All of this was extracted before removing the baby that was still alive. Kekoa gasped in horror as he witnessed the tiny body parts being placed into the large stainless steel pans along with a carcass with a missing face. All of this was preserved for closer examination and an autopsy to determine what happened to this child. Oh my God, the baby killed his twin. He tore him to pieces and ate his face, Kekoa blurted out. Normally, patients and other observers cannot see past the drape that is put up during a C-section, but Kekoa was very tall at six feet, six inches. The nurses gagged and cried, and even the doctor had to catch his breath. Kekoa, what's happening? I think the baby killed his twin and ate part of his body. What? Mrs. Levaya whispered Dr. Holmes, please remain calm. We are delivering your baby and it's coming out right now. When the doctor finally removed the surviving child, he was stunned. Both of this child's eyes were wide open and as dark as night. And he had a full set of sharp pointed teeth. The child had a firm grip on something long and skinny that he held to his hungry mouth and gnawed at. A nurse took the object away from the baby and gagged after realizing what the object was. It was a mangled finger from the baby's twin. This confirmed everyone's suspicion that the surviving twin killed and eat and ate his brother. The behavior was unheard, unheard of for humans, but something very common with sharks. Okay, that's an excerpt from episode one to find out what else happened you can tune in on valentine's day and check out okay and i hope you folks enjoyed uh, the beginning of the story and here i'm back and um you know it, it was funny writing this and thinking about reverse engineering on the story and how to make it interesting but um Right now, I have uh, four episodes completed. I want to wait until I have at least uh, six episodes before releasing it. And so it, it looks like we're on schedule with the number of episodes we're going to have. So this is The Shark Man of Haleiwa on Kindle Vela. And uh, I'm the writer. <laughs> and uh, if you folks have any questions, please uh you know, write questions, uh, anything you want, uh, you can contact me here uh, on Facebook. I am uh, Kahu Dave. You can also contact me on my uh, email that I'm going to be uh, leaving along the bottom here uh, on closed captions. And uh, until next time, uh, I hope you folks well and uh, you folks take care. All right, this is Dave Wallace from Waihua, Hawaii. Say mahalo for watching and aloha. <laughs>